My story is someone who grew up, you know, loving art, uh, loving cartoons, kind of wanting to be a cartoonist or an artist. And, you know, I went to art school and I've always, I've always drawn and painted and done art, but I kind of fell back on my fallback. You know, when you're an artist, people always tell you, well, I have a fallback plan. And so I, I think I ended up spending more on my fallback, which was technology, but I've always gone back to doing art. I do pop art and street art. Really, it's a, a combination of both. So it's conceptual, and I like to use imagery and iconography that people see every day, but put a different spin on it and make it have a, a different meaning than the meaning that most people attach to that symbol or that object. So I want my work to always be familiar enough that it opens people up to new ways of thinking about you know, a, a particular subject or an object that you know, they may not have associated a certain topic or an, uh, a, a certain thought process and I just want to do work that's interesting and work that makes people think, but I don't want to do work that pushes people away. I feel like almost what I envision happening to me artistically, maybe in a 10-year period, has gone on in a two-year period. And it's been really cool, but it's, it's, my head's almost been on a swivel, you know? And what I like about it is it's almost it's gone so fast and so furious that you don't even have time to even think about things. You have time to come up with ideas, come up with solutions on how you're gonna create your work, and you do them. And it's almost like the past two years, artistically, I've been able to do work and fail fast and self-correct and learn about ways of doing things and, and have access to tools, methods that I really think had it not been for the pandemic and kind of this expedited set of opportunities that I've had through, you know, the collective and the mural, you know, I think I would have wasted a lot of time kind of getting where I've gotten because of this experience. And for me, it's been really cool to be part of like the broader Indianapolis art community, to see kind of the strength of kind of the Indianapolis art community and specifically like the, the black art community. And one of the things that I hope, like not only what the collective has done, but I know there are other people in Indianapolis, other groups creating art. You know, I would love to see Indianapolis grow its cultural scene the way it's grown its sports scene. And I think, you know, this could be almost like a minimum viable product for maybe how to do that with the creative folks in Indianapolis, you know, so that Indianapolis can take that kind of creative capital and scale it up, you know, the way like Austin has, the way, you know, Nashville has. And I think for me, that's one of the things that this process has shown that we have the people here, you know, we have the infrastructure like new fields, you know, and we, we have the talent, we have the money, we have all the pieces and what I love about the, the collective, the Black Lives Matter mural, that was kind of a small situation, a small use case where all those pieces and parts and people were kind of brought together to create something really big. And so I, I feel like what we've done here can be a template. And I would love to see, you know, this type of thing grow and scale up so that Indianapolis can, can be a, a creative center as not just like a sports center.